Hey everyone, today we'll be covering some of the most important interview questions which may ask in the next interview. Whether you are prepping for a high stakes interview or aiming to master real world infrastructure challenges, you are in the right place. So nowadays Terraform is no longer just about spinning up resources, it's about solving real world problems efficiently and effectively. And today we'll be taking some of the most important and advanced scenario based interview questions that not only test your Terraform knowledge but also challenge your ability to think like a true DevOps pro. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and share this video with your fellow techies. Let's dive right in. So in this session we took questions related to cross account resource management, managing large state files, zero downtime deployment, conditional resource creation, resolving circular dependencies, dynamic module outputs, handling provider rate limits, debugging Terraform execution, multi-cloud infrastructure, implementing policy as code. So the first question which is related to cross account resource management is you need to manage resources in multiple AWS accounts from a single Terraform configuration. How would you handle authentication and ensure secure access? Now pause this video and think about your approach. Okay, so the right approach for this question will be to manage resources across multiple AWS accounts. We need to do two things. Use AWS provider aliases, configure multiple providers in the same configuration, each targeting a different AWS account. Number two will be assume roles. Use IAM role to assume cross account access securely. Specify the role ARN in the provider configuration. For that, two steps. Secure credentials. Use AWS credentials stored securely. Example, AWS secret manager or environment variables. Second step will be testing and validation. Use Terraform plan to ensure configurations work across all accounts before applying changes. First, use provider aliases, set up multiple providers in your configuration, each targeting a different AWS account. For example, one provider might target US East 1 and another US West 2. Then, to enable cross account access, configure IAM roles in the provider settings and specify the role ARN. Finally, store your credentials securely, perhaps in AWS Secret Manager or environment variables and always validate your configurations with Terraform plan. Now the question is why we use aliases? Aliases let you explicitly differentiate which provider configuration applies to which AWS account or reason, enabling precise control over resources. How exactly it works? The alias keyword identifies a specific provider configuration. Same way how assume roles works on. Assume role. Block allows Terraform to use STS security token service to assume the role in the target account. And Terraform uses the assumed roles permissions to manage resources securely. For secure credentials, you can go with three options. First is use environment variables where you can set AWS credentials in the environment variables. Second is use AWS secret manager where you can store credentials in AWS secret managers and retrieve them dynamically. Combine this with Terraform's external data sources to securely fetch secrets during runtime. And third option is use AWS profiles to configure profiles use this command slash AWS slash credentials for easy access. For testing and validation, always validate your Terraform configurations to ensure they work as intended across multiple accounts before applying changes. Terraform validate, check the configuration syntax for correctness and Terraform plan is to preview the changes Terraform will apply. If you get any reverse question on best practices for security and scalability, then you can mention. I am principal of least privilege as it grants only the necessary permission to roles and accounts. Remote state management because those state files securely in a remote backend. Example S3 with encryption. Lock state files as they use DynamoDB to lock state files to prevent concurrent modifications. Audit access which monitor cross-account access using AWS CloudTrail. 
So the next question is related to managing last state files and your question is your state file has grown significantly in size and operations like Terraform plan and Terraform apply are slowing down. How would you optimize this? Now again pause this video and think about your approach. Okay, so the right approach to optimize large state files is split state files. Second step will be use remote backends. Third will be selective targets. Fourth will be state file cleanup and fifth will be refactor code. Now the question is why did we use split state files? Because it helps in breaking the configuration into smaller independent Terraform workspaces or modules, each managing its own state file. Use of remote backends helps to offload the state file to a remote backend like S3 with DynamoDB for locking. As while doing selective targets, you can use the target flag to limit operations to specific resources, reducing processing time. While doing state file cleanup, remove unused resources with Terraform state RM to declutter the state file. And lastly, to refactor the code, optimize modules and variables to avoid unnecessary resource dependencies. When such questions are asked during interviews, try to make bullet point first and then explain those bullet points because that will give an impression to interview that you know these concepts in depth. So the next question is related to zero downtime deployment. Question is you are tasked with updating an application load balancer without downtime. How do you implement this in Terraform? Now pause this video and think about your approach and let's see that your approach is correct or not. Okay so the right approach for zero downtime deployments are immutable infrastructure when you use terraform to create new load balancer resources instead of modifying existing ones then second will be blue green deployment deploy a new target group and associate it with the updated resources and gradually shift traffic to the new target group third will be health checks ensure health checks are configured for the load balancer to verify the readiness of new instances and lastly, fourth is use Terraform modules. Abstract the load balancer logic into a reusable module for consistent updates. Okay, so the next question is related to conditional resource creation. And the question is, you want to provision resources, example an RDS instance, only if a specific condition is met, such as feature flag being enabled. How would you implement this in Terraform? Now again, pause this video and think about an approach that you will do to tackle this question during an interview. Okay, so the answer for this question will be to conditionally create resources, we can use Terraform's count meta argument which is perfect for this. Let's take an example, you can create a resource to be created only when a variable like enable RDS is true. This ensures your provisioning resources dynamically and efficiently. And second is use conditional expression in modules. Pass variables to modules and use count and or for each to control resource creation dynamically. Okay, so the next question is related to resolving circular dependencies. And your question is, you encounter a circular dependency error when defining interdependent resources, example, an IAM role and a lambda function. How would you resolve this? Now think about the approach and comment down below your approach so that we can see how exactly your approach is or is it better than ours. Okay, so the answer for this question will be to resolve circular dependencies, we can decouple dependencies, separate the configuration into two stages. Create the IAM role first and then reference it in the lambda function. Use data sources. Fetch the resource attributes after creation using data sources. The solution is to decouple dependencies. For instance, create the IAM role first, then reference it in the lambda function using data sources. When needed, enforce an execution order with the depends on argument. And the next will be explicit dependency. Use depends on to enforce execution order when possible. So these are the two approaches which you can take to resolve circular dependencies. And if you need a detailed explanation of these cases which are explained above, let me know in the comment section so that we'll make a separate video for the same. So the next question is related to dynamic module outputs. And the question that we have is, you have a Terraform module that outputs values. 
how would you dynamically reference these outputs in another module without hard coding think about the approach and let us know in the comment section okay so the answer for this question will be to dynamically reference output modules first we will pass output as variables export module outputs and then pass them as inputs to another module export the modules and pass them as inputs for example you can reference module dot module one dot output underscore id in another module and if you're working with multiple values use dynamic maps to handle them flexibly okay so coming up next we have is handling provider rate limits and the question for that is your terraform script frequently fails due to a provider api rate limits example aws api throttling how would you mitigate this issue think about the approach and pause this video for a second okay so the answer for this question will be to handle api rate limits we can use configure timeouts in resource definitions to extend wait times limit concurrent api calls using the parallelism flag and leverage retry logic supported by certain terraform providers to handle transient failures and the next question is related to debugging terraform execution and the question is your terraform run fails with unexpected errors how would you debug and identify the root cause now pause the video and think about the approach to handle this problem Okay, to debug Terraform errors, we can use enable debug logs. Use the tf underscore log environment variables to enable detail logs. Second thing that you can do is run with dry run. Use Terraform plan to preview changes and identify errors. Next thing you can do is validate configuration. Use Terraform validators to check for syntax or logical errors. Also, you can check state file. Inspect the state file for discrepancies or corrupted data. And lastly, you can do is manual debugging. Break down the configuration into smaller parts and test incrementally. Okay, so the next question is related to multi-cloud infrastructure. And the question is, your company wants to deploy infrastructure on both AWS and Azure using Terraform. How would you design this configuration? Now, pause this video and think about the approach that you will take to handle this situation in your interview. To manage multi-cloud infrastructure, we can use multiple providers. Configure separate providers for AWS and Azure in the same Terraform configuration. Also, you can opt for modular design. You can create cloud-specific modules to encapsulate functionality. You can also opt for state separation. Like you can use different state files or backends for each cloud provider to avoid conflicts. Lastly, you can go for CI/CD pipelines. Automate deployment across both clouds with the environment-specific configurations. So this is the approach that you can follow to handle such scenarios. Okay, the last question is related to implementing policy as code. And the question is, how would you enforce organizational policies, example, tagging standards, resource limits in Terraform? Now think about the approach that you will take to handle such cases in your interview. To enforce policies in Terraform, we can use Sentinel Terraform Enterprise. Write Sentinel policies to enforce constraints such as mandatory tax or size limits. Second thing that you can do is pre-commit hooks. Integrate tools like Terraform Compliance or OPA Open Policy Agent in pre-commit pipelines to validate codes. Third thing that you can do is module enforcement. Create approved modules with built-in pipelines ensuring compliance by design. And lastly, you can audit and review, periodically review state files and configuration for violations. So these are the things that you can do to enforce policies in Terraforms.